it's time now for our money man, Martin Lewis, to give his advice on your financial dilemmas. But before we get to the first one... Hi, Martin. You OK? Good morning, good morning. Good, good morning, nice Martin. to see you. Tell us what's happening on your show tonight. Well, it's a big one tonight. I'm going to try and squeeze a lot in, as I always do. I'll be starting off with, for anybody who is paying interest on their credit cards, my simple rule, uh, if you can't afford to pay off your card in full so that you're paying interest, you can't afford not to check if you can get a balance transfer. Many people can save hundreds or thousands of pounds switching cards. But then I'm going to go into a, a much mystified subject of credit scoring, how it works, how they decide whether you're getting a mortgage, a contract mobile phone, energy bills, credit card, or any form of borrowing. How do they actually work out whether they want to lend money to you and what can you do to boost it? There are so many mis and under misunderstandings. I want to get rid of those and show you how it really works. It's not always what you think it is. Well, you know, much we up. love the show. You know we do. Mm -hmm. um, you just mentioned mortgages. Let's get straight into it, Martin. Justin's got in touch. Morning, Justin. And says, over the past few years, uh, we've been making monthly and annual overpayments on our mortgage. Our mortgage interest rate is 3.5%. Would we be better putting this money into a savings account instead of paying off the mortgage? Because it looks like the interest is better in the savings account. That's a good question. Yeah, so the general rule is if your mortgage rate is the same or more than savings, you're better to overpay the mortgage, providing there aren't any exit penalties and you've got a cash emergency fund. If the savings rate is quite a bit higher than your mortgage, you're better off to put money in your, in your savings account. Now, top paying easy access account at the moment, you've got Coventry Building Society at 5.15%. Same for a one-year fix with Smart Save. They're quite significantly more than that 3.5% mortgage, which is a pretty decent rate these days. So in your case, the likelihood is, yes, you will be better off saving than overpaying your mortgage. I'd go in, onto a mortgage overpayment calculator. There are some which compare overpaying to savings and do the actual numbers. But, uh, you know, back of, the, back of the envelope calculation I'm doing in my head, that would certainly seem it. The one thing I would say, though, is when it comes to remortgaging, the less you're borrowing in proportion to your house's value, so the better your LTV loan to value, generally, the better mortgage deal you can get, unless you're borrowing less than 60% of your house's value. So once you get to that stage, first of all, mortgage rates are going to be higher. Once your current deal ends, they're going to go higher because they are for everyone. And second, it's better to have less equity may get you a better mortgage. So you'd want to make sure any money you're putting in savings is available to you at the time you're going to remortgage so that you can use it to diminish the new mortgage because that's going to be more expensive. Again, keeping aside a cash emergency fund. So when you're doing your savings, if you are fixing and your mortgage ends in, say, 15 months, a one-year fix is good, a two-year fix is bad because your money's then locked away and you couldn't use it to reduce the future mortgage. Lovely, okay. Martin. Thank you. That's answered your question, Justin. Uh, Amanda says, my window company has gone bust. What will now happen to my 10 years guarantee? Oh, yeah. Um, so, assuming it is a normal guarantee, it's gone. I mean, the guarantee is by the, the firm. You, you, you're a creditor to the firm, so you could argue right. that, I mean, you'll get pennies in the pounds back. There, now, there are a couple of things, I'd, asides I'd go for here. First of all, check it was a guarantee and not a, an insurance-based warranty. If it, was a, if it was from an insurance company and there was some insurance involved, then it's the insurance company your liability is with and it will stay. But if it is simply a guarantee from the company you bought it from, that company no longer exists. It can't guarantee anything anymore. The other thing I would remind everyone is people get carried away by guarantees and warranties. You have statutory rights when it buys something. And I call them the sad fart rules. Sad <laughs> fart. Here you go. So if you buy something, it must be satisfactory quality as described. There's your sad fit for purpose and last a reasonable length of time. There's your fart. If it doesn't, and it doesn't last a reasonable length of time, then you've a legal right to go back to the firm that you bought it from. Your firm's gone bust, but if you paid for any of it on a credit card or plastic, you may be able to go back to the card provider if something goes wrong and your sad fart rights are breached within six years of buying it. So it won't cover the full 10 years, but within six years of mm -hmm. buying it, I'm not saying if it breaks within six years, you're covered. I'm saying if it then wasn't of sufficient quality when you got it to last a reasonable length of time, you could go to the card companies and see what they can do. But that's all. I mean, I'm, I'm shuffling things around the edges. The, the big picture is it's gone. 
Yeah. Okay. Oh, fingers crossed fingers that they did it on credit. Uh, Michelle's been in touch as well, Martin. Uh, my husband has got a sole bank account. Our house is paid for in joint names. He's got about three or four pensions. I don't think he's got a will, but he seems to think that if he died before me, everything comes over to me. Can I keep telling him that this isn't the case? Well, assuming you're in England, and it does depend in which UK nation you're in, the standard intestacy rules, which are the, what's what you call the rules of what happens if you die without a will, intestacy, people should go and look it up for which part of which UK nation they're in. The standard intestacy rules from memory say all your personal assets plus the first £322,000 that you're worth goes to your married spouse or civil partner. If you're not married, that's meaningless in law and, and nothing goes to them. After 322,000, the rest goes to any surviving children or grandchildren and the partner, split 50-50. So I don't know what the assets are. If less than 322,000, then the likelihood is it would all go to you. But dying without a will complicates the process, makes it longer and more of a hassle when somebody dies for things to be passed over, even if you want it all to go to your spouse. You're better to have a simple will. You might not want to pay for one, the will packs out there, they're not brilliant, but if you follow it step by step and, you know, get one of those 20, 30 quid will packs, at least have something written there that just says, I want everything to go to my wife and is signed and witnessed in the right way. That is better than nothing. And I would do that rather than just relying on the intestacy laws. Yeah, for the sake of 20 or 30 quid, just be safe rather yeah. than sorry, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. most okay. people... Most people should be doing a proper will. There are, there are special schemes in the year, in October and in March and November. You've got will aid and free wills, free wills for over 55s, which is where they want you to leave something to a charity. Will aid is where you give a £100 donation, I think it is, to a charity. And then all of those, you get a solicitor to draft your will for you. That's way better than the 20, 30 quid law pack. You could wait for that and get it done properly. But if nothing else, I, I prefer not to rely on the intestacy laws. It can complicate yeah. things. Martin, good luck with the show tonight, mate. Yes. It's always lovely to speak Have to you. Have a good one, Martin. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. Take care. Uh, right, coming up next.